Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Okay, great. Uh, cool. As we are waiting for more people to come into this space, um, I would like to introduce myself. So welcome to a Twitter space by Hasnode. We will be chatting about how to create content for your blog and social media. I will be your host. My name is Aristeria and I am a community manager at Hasnode. And with me, I have my co-host and community manager as well, Akansha. Hi, everyone. I'm really looking forward to this space. I'm pretty sure all the folks will have major learnings from after the end of this space. So, Yay. yeah. <laughs> and of course, with us, we have four amazing speakers and bloggers. We have Rizel, Madi, Eddie, and Suhail. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing any name wrong, but in a bit, the stage will be yours and you can reintroduce yourselves. So before doing that, and if we have any new listeners that aren't aware of Hashnode, Hashnode is a home for tech writers and readers. It's a free blogging platform for engineers, leaders, and the whole dev community. You can blog on a custom domain, own your content, and share your ideas freely with the world. And without further ado, we can uh, start this space and Eddie, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. Thank you so much uh, for being here. I'm super excited to geek out. No pressure on me to go first. Wow. Um, okay. <laughs> so um, my name my name is Eddie, and I'm a full-time uh, content creator and dev of the service. I've been uh, coding for as a full-stack dev and DevOps for over 15 years, and it's just amazing to geek out with you all. There's all my links in my bio. And yeah, I just love geeking out with you all. So I'm here to, to share what I do, what I do in my strategy. I've built a team of now with three people. And uh, I just want to yeah help people and get other people to um, do what they love and get paid to do what they, you know, what they love doing. It's like, it's perfect. So uh, I look forward to hearing everyone's questions. Yay. Nice to have you with us, Eddie. And uh, let's move on to Rizal. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Rizal. I'm a developer advocate at GitHub and um, really passionate about content creation, especially since it's part of my job. And I'm excited to talk about how people can get started with content creation because I think it's great to help with solidifying your, your own learning and then educating others as well. Nice to have you with us as well. I'm looking forward to listening to your tips and tricks because I've been following you as well as the other speakers. So I know you've been creating some really nice content. And we also have with us uh, Suhail. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but I see you are a listener. Um, I don't know if you see the option to become a speaker. You should have received an invitation for that. Okay, if not, we will try to reinvite you. And we should also have with us Madi, but Madi is also a listener at the moment. If you can please accept our invitation so you can speak on your own, that would be nice as well. So until we solve these small issues, maybe we can start with some introductory questions and then we can move again to our speakers. So my first question is on which platforms do you create content? I know some of you are using Hashnode, but most of you are also using social media, especially Twitter. Maybe you're using YouTube, TikTok, I don't know. So let's get started with that. Um, Rizel, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. So yeah, I definitely do use Hashnode. I also cross post on Dev.2 for blog posts just because like different developers use different blogging platforms and I want to make sure that it's it gets out there. Um, I'm, I'm always on Twitter. If people follow me, they already know that I maybe tweet too much. Um, I, I do Twitch streams occasionally, like maybe once a week, and I'll repost those on YouTube, but I'm not a big TikToker or YouTube short person. I, I'm just not that good at it, but hoping to get better at it in the future. 
I see and I feel you. TikTok is a bit new to me as well. Um, what about you, Eddie? I mostly use Twitter and YouTube. Um, I am still on, on platforms like LinkedIn and blogging platforms and so forth. We do host our own blog. Um, but uh, as uh, Rizal mentioned, we do put it on other platforms as well to, again, to, to reach other, other, you know, more people. Um, but yeah, I focus on, on, on Twitter and YouTube. Those are my main two, but I st I'm still on Instagram as well and other platforms. I think people should probably, if people don't know what platforms to use, I would probably suggest that at the beginning, maybe um, using more than they want to and seeing which ones they like, which ones work well for them. And then they, maybe they should focus on, on two, one, two th or three platforms, um, whichever ones they can kind of cope with. But uh, we can go into more detail later on. But I feel we can get our content to work harder for us. To give an example, last night I recorded a YouTube video and then I came out and I did some tweets about the video, but not like salesy, not like, hey, I'm doing a YouTube video. But no, with some tips that are, that are like small bite sized information from the YouTube video. Um, and then, um, you know, the, the videos in editing and so forth, and I could make a blog mm. post on it. You can get our content to work a lot harder for us, but we can dig into that later on. Yes, and I'd love that advice of you that we can start with many platforms and then we can see which one suits us best. And I think that a lot of people have this question, like how do I start with which platforms do I start? So this is actually a nice, uh, a nice step. Okay, uh, what attracted you to these platforms? For example, Twitter, why do you use Twitter and not any other platform? Is that a question for me? Or for, yeah, or if you want to. No, you can start if you want. <laughs> I didn't want to. I should have let uh, Rizal go first. Rizal, do you want to go first? Sure, I can go. No, no biggie. Um, what attracted me? Okay, for Twitter, I've been using Twitter since 2010. I wasn't necessarily using it for, like, I guess, like, intentional content creation. I was just using it, like, regular social media to, to chat with my friends. Um, but I think what attracted me is that it's easy to reach people without, like, mm -hmm. as much effort. Um, so it's like I can write a few statements um, and, or a Twitter thread and it can reach a couple of people. I can reshare my other content that I did create on Twitter as well. And then I also really love Twitter spaces um, because of like things like this, like you can talk to hundreds of people um, across the world in the Twitter space without even having to like show your sp face or anything. It's pretty low effort. Um, but you're still able to reach a ton of people and you're still able to, at least I'm still able to also learn from other people. Um, in terms of blogging, I, I and like hash note and dev.2, I was really attracted to those because I love writing. You know, some people mm -hmm. like video creation, but I really like writing. I feel like that's how I best um, express myself and I'm able to like get my point across well. Um, and I like that with hash note, um, it allows you to like, own your own your domain um and i like like just seeing that other users are on it as well and it's like active and things like that um yeah i would say those are the things that attracted me for twitch it at first didn't attract me i felt a little um intimidated by like making sure i have like a little cute twitch stream going on but once i was able to talk with people about the experience and once i actually experienced it i realized oh my god it's really fun like um there's there's whenever you have like a few viewers like i never have like a ton of viewers but the few viewers i have they're so encouraging like it's not as scary as i thought it was like it's really fun to to chat with them um so um those are those are the things that attracted me to the platforms nice i love your answer Okay, um, I can see that we have with us uh, Suhail. So, would you like first to introduce yourself, and then maybe um, like uh, share what platforms you're using and what attracted you to them? Yeah, sure. So, hey everyone, I'm Suhail, and I work as a developer advocate for LifePeer. I have been creating content for more than a year on different platforms such as Hashnode, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And yes, I'm very much excited to be joining with you all in this space. 
and coming to the answer for your question regarding the content platform on which one I usually choose, uh, I think it really depends type of content uh, a person want to create. Uh, for example, if you want to create a long type of content, uh, maybe blogs such as Hashnode would be a good place. But if you are very much a person who want to prefer a video content, then YouTube might be a good place to start. Mm -hmm. So I believe it really depends on what type of content a person want to create. And then there's lots of varieties of different platforms which they can choose with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, nice. Um, Akansha, do you have any question for our speakers? Yeah. So when I started writing content, it was my motivation that when I entered in my first KubeCon, so I started up blogging on Hashnode and, and Twitter threads. But yeah, I would love to know that what uh, made you got started in content and what was the first content you published? And I would, Eddie, would you like to go first? Well, going first is always hard. Um, okay, so can you repeat the question, please, just to make sure I get it right and keep my answer concise, otherwise I'll talk forever. Yeah, so like, like what was the first content you published? Like, like for me, it was my first KubeCon experience and I started out with blogging because of that. For me, it's quite hard because I've been kind of doing it on and off for many years, but not taking it seriously. So it was... Um, about a year and a half ago, I think it was, April 2021, I think it was, when um, a client said, hey, can we pay you to write a blog post, do a tweet, do a YouTube video? And I thought, okay, now we take this seriously because they're going to want stats and, and those sorts of things. So that's when I, I would say I started taking it seriously. So if we take Twitter, for example, I think Twitter's great. It's short form content. As uh, Rizal mentioned, there isn't a lot of kind of effort needed to put content consistently out on it and it can then get more traction to the rest of our long form content long form content like blog posts and youtube videos are really really important um but twitter is kind of you kind of get a big bigger surface area more digestible bite-sized content so i had about 4200 followers back in uh, april last year and then I started taking it seriously, scheduling tweets um, throughout the day and night to cover multiple time zones. Um, and then like a year and a half later at, a, at 100K. So um, I think my first content that I took seriously, like I said, was the client one, which would have been on open source NoSQL databases. And uh, yeah, that would have been the, the first one that I started taking seriously. And then from then, I tried to get more organized and, and more consistent. Wow, that's interesting. And I generally feel that cons cons consistent creation schedule is important. Like you ensure like a steady flow of leads and you reach a lot of folks. Yeah, so Sohail, do, what about you? Am I audible? Uh, yes, you are. Sohail is on mute. Okay, Rizal, would you like to go? Yeah, sure. Um, I would say similar to Eddie is that I used to do... I used to, like, create content, I guess, since I was I was younger. I just, like, didn't – I didn't take it seriously. And it wasn't always tech content. Like, I used to blog, like, back in the day. Um, but I think when I started to take it more seriously was maybe, like, 2020 because I wanted to become a developer advocate. And I kept asking people, like, how do I do it? And they were like, oh, well, you have to have, like, some examples of um, – like content out like technical content so I had posted um a blog post about like um a git command called git bisect which enables you to like um find bugs in your code a little bit easier um so that was like the first one and I used that in my interviews to be like yeah here's me writing um technical content and then once I became a developer advocate the first like blog post I wrote was about overcoming the fear of contributing to open source. Um, so it's really hard to be like, which one was my first one? Because there's been like many iterations of me starting over my um, my journey of creating content. But yeah. Thanks, Rizal, for answering the question. Sohail, are you there? Yeah. Uh, so I think for me, uh, creating content was started like about a year and a half, uh, which I started by writing articles on Hashnode. 
and that's where I started writing blogs and articles. Uh, so uh, I took it seriously from the time after I posted an article about uh, MongoDB, which got shared on their Twitter handle, and also I got a DM from them that they really liked the post, and also uh, that's what motivated me too much that I've understood that. Uh, they, they read my article without like or tagging them or anything. They found it and they read it and they liked it. So that's what that uh, motivated me uh, too much. And that's how I started writing constantly articles. Uh, when I started, I used it to post an article every week. But from the time to time when I got busy with my current job, it's now currently a little bit hard to post it weekly. But I'm trying to do my best to at least post a, a long uh, article maybe once a month so that the viewers at least uh, get a benefit from it. Yeah, I totally agree that you should provide your viewers and readers with something of value to, value to them. You should make their time worthwhile spending on your, your content. Okay, so now I see Maddie is there. Maddie, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much for your patience. I joined from my laptop, but it wasn't working. <laughs> so maybe one thing that we need to tell Elon Musk to fix. <laughs> uh, okay, so my name is Madi. I work as a software engineer in London. Uh, I, I recently started with a new company, so today is my first day. Um, so, so far, so good. I've been a blogger for just over a year now. Um, I think it's been a year and five months. And um, yeah, so far, so great. I, I, I've been enjoying my content creation journey. That's really great. And congratulations for your very first day. <laughs> Thank you. Yay. Thank you so much. Big congratulations. And it's so nice to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that we covered how you started and your first blogs and the first type of them. Uh, but do you still follow the same format? Do you still blogging or writing about the same stuff? Or do you prefer to follow um, a trend or something that you're currently learning? So yeah, who wants to start with this? Yeah, so... What I like to blog about, mainly I like to, um, I do kind of both. Uh, so sometimes I like to write about current trends. Sometimes I like to write about the something, some things that I know. Um, but yeah, I do a bit of both, but I don't really um, uh, write a lot about current trends because I feel that that is more like, it's not a blog anymore, it just becomes news. And I don't really want to do that that much. Um, but, um, yeah, so what I'm saying is that I usually, um, I mainly use my blog to educate and to share my knowledge. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I have read a lot of your content and I think that you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much. So sweet of you. <laughs> um, what about you, Eddie? Um, I was uh, listening to, to Mary's answer. Um, I think that was, yeah, great. I definitely changed. I think by, by doing, we, we learn what um, kind of works for us and what doesn't work for us. In terms of um, what they call trend jacking, I think is the, the a cool expression um, of to kind of follow trends. I don't do that because I feel the content is, is uh, not as long lived, if it, even if it's on um, uh, a longer form kind of platform, like a blogging platform or a YouTube and so forth. Those are, are searchable and are around for years to come. I've got YouTube videos I've done three years ago that are still coming up in people's feeds and so forth. I'm a bit embarrassed about them because I've improved since then, but um, that's pretty, pretty useful. But the videos where they might have been topical, then those videos don't ever get any more traction afterwards. So I feel it's, um, unless it's something someone's really passionate about or they want to try and get some traffic from those trends, but it is a lot of the time it is kind of very throwaway content. Maybe it's something they want to do on a platform like Twitter where the content is already throwaway. You know, tweets that are two days old really don't get any more traffic. So um, if you follow a trend on there, as, as Rizal said, it's lower efforts. Um, so, you know, if it doesn't last very long or doesn't work out very well, it's, it's not, not so bad because blog posts and YouTube videos, they take a lot of time and effort. And so you want them to have that longevity, um, of, of bringing traffic for, you know, months, if not years later. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Madia, so you raised your hand. Do you want to say something? No, sorry. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> want to, to be a reaction, but yeah. I've, I've... <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. So I, I actually agree with Eddie. Uh, videos and um, articles usually take a lot of time to write them. So we should pay attention to what we write. And uh, yeah, yeah. So Suhail, what about you? Uh, yeah, so I think for this point, I really don't have anything to add. As uh, Edie and Maddie have already mentioned, it, uh, how they create content. And I think mine is also uh, similar to uh, what has uh, Maddie and Edie added. Okay. And now I have another question. If you, we can start with Suhail again. Oh, sorry, Rizal, you, you raised your hand. Yeah, please go on. Oh, I just raised my hand to answer the question. But if I yeah. didn't answer, you can move on. Sorry. No, 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 it's um, okay. Please, please do. All right. I was going to say, similar to Eddie, um, that my writing has evolved over time. I would say, I think the topics are still pretty similar, like technical, um, but they are a little bit more geared towards GitHub sometimes um, because now I work here. So sometimes I'll be like introducing um, different GitHub products or thinking about like what my team talked about and what we want to um, help increase adoption for. Um, but I also tend to write um, like career blog posts as well. Um, now that I feel more confident in my career, I feel like I'm able to like talk about different things that I've seen on like how to support junior developers better um, and like how to navigate um, developer relations. So that's all I wanted to add. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Suhail? Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to mention I have to drop off for a super uh, the, at this time for a last minute call. And yeah, thank you very much for hosting this space. And yeah, I will look forward to listen to the recording of this space. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hear the thoughts of the amazing speakers which we have here. Thank you, Shail, for being with us and good luck with your meeting. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so my next question is a short one. I would just like to know if you schedule your content. Uh, these days we have the opportunity to do that on Twitter, on most social media, but also if you're using Hashnode, uh, you can also schedule your content. So do you think that scheduling our content is something important or when you just create and edit that, you will uh, hit publish? Mm, Madi, would you like to start? Yes, I can go first. So I believe that scheduling is super important because um, it makes my life easier. So what I do, I mainly write my content during the week and throughout the weekends. And I always post on Monday uh, morning. Um, and yeah, so that way um, I don't have to wake up early in the morning and uh, just to hit the publish button. So that's one feature that I was really looking forward to in Hashner and came. So um, yeah, it's just great. And yeah, I do think that it makes you more organized if you um, can schedule your um, your blog post. Also, there is um, um, like there is a cool off period between your, uh, when you're writing and when you decide to publish content that allows you maybe to come up with more ideas, to uh, make some changes. So yeah, I do believe in scheduling um, blog posts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, personally, I, I also agree that scheduling can be really, really helpful. But also, let's hear what Eddie has to say. Yeah, I think um, scheduling is the really the one thing that made me change the way I create content. Like my mindset is in I got more organized. I, I covered more time zones. And I didn't say, oh, today I'm not feeling great or I'm exhausted or whatever it was that I, I would then miss that kind of cadence. Yes, we do have, um, we do need to take time off, but if you're scheduling weeks ahead, then when you have those those days where you do want to take a break or meetings overrun or whatever it is, then your, um, your frequency doesn't change. So for example, I took three weeks off recently from creating content, but no one noticed because I plan a month, two months, three months ahead. Yes, I do change things as we go. So if we go to an event, I will swap out some of my content for me being at the event so I do keep it kind of I'm doing air quotes now real time um, but then uh, I just move those types of content to the, to the end of the timeline so if I like I said I've scheduled one month ahead for example 
um, and I go to an event this coming weekend, then if I'm going to post some extra stuff, I don't want to flood and, 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 and drown people with my content. So I just swap something that I've got scheduled with something that's happening at that event at that weekend and move it, move what I, what I pulled out to the end of the end of the kind of the queue or the timeline as it were. Um, but for me, that's what really, really helped me go from doing it as a hobby to making um, side income from it and actually turning it into an entire business. Um, so even if someone doesn't want to make it into a business, it really helped me help me scale. So YouTube videos all um, planned ahead and scheduled ahead. I use FeedHive. It's amazing. I can post to Instagram, LinkedIn, you know, um, uh, YouTube, all of them, Twitter and so forth. And some I post to all, some I post to only certain platforms uh, and, and so forth. So um, yes, if, I would definitely recommend someone schedule ahead and I, go, I, see, I see we have you know julia in the audience i know julia schedules um ahead as well which is which is great and same with produma produma has you know grown loads recently on twitter uh, and on github and i know it's because he's been scheduling his content as well because we all get busy so i can't recommend that enough consistency is so important but i think to be consistent you've got to schedule ahead Absolutely. I think you, you shared some amazing tips. Uh, consistency is a big one for me, but you also mentioned side income. So if we have some time later in this space, we will try to talk a bit about that as well. Uh, what about you, Rizal? Okay, I wish I scheduled stuff more, but I'm super impatient. I do. I, I agree that scheduling is helpful and I do it sometimes. But a lot of times I don't like I have no patience. If I wrote a blog post at 2 a.m., I'm sometimes like, you know, what? I'm just going to press publish, um, which is like not always great in terms of like metrics, I guess, because like less people are going to read it at 2 a.m. But I just have no patience. Um, But I do agree that like scheduling things are is great. Um, Sometimes I will schedule stuff if like there's too many things that happen like all at once, like if um. Like, a, a podcast came out with me that, like, I recorded a month ago, but it finally, like, came out. Or, like, and, and I wrote a blog post, and this happened, and that happened. I don't want to, like, overwhelm my, my Twitter timeline, and I don't want it to seem like I'm just, like, super only engaged in myself. So then I'll, like, spread it out. Um, or for, for GitHub, we use... Um, the, the social team and the DevRel team, like, use the, the Twitter account and have access to it and stuff like that. So I'll use, um, I think it's called Social Sprout or Sprout Social. I have it backwards um, in one of these. But basically, I'll use that to schedule out, like, whatever social posts um, go out for, for GitHub. Yeah, I think maybe for social media, because we use them more, maybe it's kind of easier to schedule them because we don't want to be spammy. But sometimes for articles, we don't write them so often, which, by the way, let's change that. And whenever we have them ready, we will post them. But um, on the other hand, uh, and I think that Madi mentioned that, if we leave some time we can edit them better maybe we have more ideas and we can add them a little bit later so i guess that it's it's a mix sometimes we will just throw them and publish them immediately and sometimes it's okay to wait rethink some things and yeah okay uh thank you guys so far thank you folks so far and in a bit we will continue with questions from our audience but before doing that Akansha, do you have any other question for our speakers? Yeah, so I feel that um, by content creation, you are basically building a brand. All of these different types of pieces of content together, it, which creates your brand, right? So I would love to know that what do you think that what are the benefits of content creation? Who would like to go first? Um, Eddie, would you like to go first? Okay, thank you. Sure. I'd rather wait a moment and let someone else speak. Um, I, I love this question because um, I think, yes, it definitely is about building a brand and people might not want to build a brand, but if, if you don't build one, then other people will build it for you. Um, and so the great thing is by putting out content, you are building a brand and you might not even realize it. And, and the benefits of having a brand is people get to know you already. If you're going for any position, let's take DevRel as an example, and you're already putting content out there, then people know kind of how you um, 
how you communicate in blog posts or in videos are great as well. They can see, you know, how, how, how you kind of explain things and I'm doing a terrible job now. So hopefully no one judges me on this, but, um, it's uh, putting yourself out there is really important. And you get feedback, and so you get to learn and improve. And the only way to improve is to do it better. Like I said, my my you know first hundred videos or even first few hundred videos are all terrible, um, and and they got better with practice over time. I, I look back and I can't look at my videos from like six months ago because I think they're terrible. But the the idea is that we keep getting better all, all the time, and you know we can get job offers. I get all my clients because of the content that I create. Even before I became a full time content creator, when I was doing full stack dev. That is how I got my clients from GitHub, from blog posts, from um, tweets and so forth. Even though I wasn't taking it seriously, people would re- reach out to me and, and, and ask. So, um, yeah, putting ourselves out there is hard and it's scary, um, but the benefits are, are massive. And you get to, like, meet all you amazing people. Like, it's great to, to geek out with all of you. Um, I just, it's, it's brilliant. Um, imagine going to an event and you've already kind of got friends there or people feel that they already know you. So, um Again, looking at the people in the audience, for example, I met Amanda at a conference recently, and um, when you meet them in person, it's great, but if you've already kind of geeked out with them a bit on Twitter or, on, or read their blog posts, you feel like you know each other. It just makes it, you know, isn't that kind of, you don't have to break that ice anymore. It's already kind of broken. You're already like long-term friends sort of thing. So, um, yeah, there's, there's massive benefits. And, and again, you just get better, right? If someone writes blog posts, their GitHub issues and their GitHub pull requests will be better because they're used to writing. They don't mind writing a few extra more sentences explaining it um, rather than just a, a GitHub issue that just says bug, um, um, bug on homepage or something. It's like, well, what, 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 on, what on the homepage? So it's, it is all practice and it is scary and it is hard. Um, that's why I can't wait for the questions from the audience to see what people's challenges are and how we can help. But thank you so much for that question. Thanks, Eddie. Those were very great, insightful points. Rizal, would you like to add on to Eddie's points? Yeah, I would say, um, and I think I said this earlier, that I think for me, content creation has helped to solidify what I've learned. Um, I think like early in my career as a software engineer, I like would solve a bug or create a feature or whatever. And then a similar problem would come up and I'd forget how I did it. Even if it was like two, three weeks ago, I'd be like, huh, I don't remember. So one, like it, it helps me to remember. And if I don't, I can easily go back to a blog post or a video or whatever type of content I created to go back to it as a reference for myself. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, here's how I did it. It's almost like my own like personal like stack overflow. Um, and then on top of that, it, it helps to educate others um, because even if it's a topic that someone else has already covered, um, just me being able to explain it in the way that I understand it may help somebody else. Like maybe, maybe the way that one person wrote something didn't make sense to somebody, but it made sense to another person. And the way that I wrote something made sense to another person, but didn't make sense to somebody. So um, it's, it's just helpful in uh, helping the software industry grow as well or, or whatever industry you're in. Um, what else? And then, yeah, I agree with Eddie about it, building your, your brand and skyrocketing your career. I think a lot of times with our careers, we, we lean heavily on either content creation or expertise, but I think both are needed. I think, like, you have to know how to use whatever tool or programming language or whatever, like, industry you're in and know how to do it, like, well and continue to grow with it, but it's also good to, like, create content and show that you know how to use that so that it's easier for you to get jobs because people are like oh that's so ins- that's eddie like i know eddie from twitter i know they know their stuff i've seen their code on github and i've seen them create content i think sometimes like people um create too much content and then don't do that much on like learning to to actually code and then they come off as grifters because it's like oh five ways to make sure you know how to code but they don't they don't know how to code themselves or on the flip side where um you you might code a lot but nobody knows you might be really great at your job and nobody knows that and um it's good to put yourself out there because nobody's going to amplify your message and your brand as um great as you would um and i hope i didn't ramble too much sorry Thanks, Rizal. I totally agree that it helps us understand our strengths and you can leverage it to create better content and thrive as content creators. 
Okay, so Maddie, you wanna add on something? Yes, so I agree with um with everything what Eddie uh, and Vizel said. Like I agree with everything. The only thing that I will add is that with content creation, you add more skills to your tool set. Um, and you know we've seen it all over, like all over the news. There are so many layers happening, uh, and the soft engineers. Even though we are well paid, we still um, we can still get and uh, lose our job. So. Uh, with content creation, at least for me, I do blogging a lot and I've learned how to write better. I've learned uh, search en engine optimization, which is great. Uh, so uh, if anything happens, I could potentially leverage those skills um, and, yeah, and make a, a, a side income out of that. So, yeah. Thanks, Maddie. Okay, so I will move on to my next question, which was from the audience, which says that, being an introvert makes us better at content creation or not? Like, do you agree with the statement? Um, Eddie, Eddie, would you like to comment on this? Sure. I think um, if you're doing something like videos or live streams, um, being less of an introvert is, is, is a bit beneficial. But I think when it comes to tweets and blog posts, I don't think it, it, it's... Um, I think it's probably an advantage because you probably don't get distracted with other forms of content like YouTube videos and, and live streams. Like I love live streams, like engaging with people and so forth. Um, but then I don't write as much blogs as I probably should do. So um, I think being an introvert will, will uh, it, there is a benefit, right? Whatever skills we have, experiences we have, we can use it to our advantage. And I think if someone's an introvert, they should definitely use it to their advantage and, and use the, the formats and platforms that work well for them. I mean, they can even collab with people, right? If someone writes a really good blog post that they're super proud of, you could partner with someone who does videos and say, well, you know, here's this blog post. Could you go through with it on a video and you obviously give credit and shout out and say you're going through the blog post. Um, and, and it works two ways. And you can embed the video in the blog post, right? So you can then um, both benefits from, um, you know, two different audiences. We're all here to to help each other. I don't see it as, um, you know, I'm not, I don't feel I'm competing with anyone. I feel that um, people are helping me and I'm helping other people. So it's, again, another great way to, to grow. So we should use this here yeah, to our advantage. Yeah, definitely. They need to identify their unique characteristics and use that for their advantage. Okay, so Rizal, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I would say it's hard to, I don't know, it's hard to um, make a state, like make a comment on that statement, because I think it's a little generalized. There's different types of introverts and different types of extroverts, I think. Um, I'm introverted, and I don't, I don't know if that makes me better or worse at content creation. I think uh, getting better at content creation comes with practice, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a tough statement. I would say maybe an introvert might prefer to create content through text form because it's less um, like forced engagement. Like we can, like at least for me, like I like Twitter because like I can just engage when I want to if I don't want to I can easily close the app but like if I'm on like a, a zoom call or in person it's rude for me to just like walk away <laughs> to, to to recharge my battery um so I would say maybe we prefer that more but I wouldn't say like that means we're better or worse than than an extrovert yeah it definitely varies from person to person and there is no right and wrong answer to it but yeah interesting viewpoint so, okay, Eddie has raised his hand. You want to say something? Yeah, I was just going to do the, the flip side of what I said um, was that I've had people um, in the past and even recently reach out to me and say, hey, I, I like your video. I'm more of a writer, like threads on Twitter or blog posts. Can I use your, your content to do that? And, and I always say yes. Um, I ask them to give me credit at the end, but I always ask them to put their opinion and spin on it. So therefore, they're not just kind of you know taking the, the video into a text format. They are saying oh, I would do it this way, or I agree with this, or, you know, well, whatever whatever it is. And, and so I think, again, you know, thinking about the, the, the introvert question, that they can um, collaborate with people. If, even if they're, if they're struggling for content, they could collaborate with other people as well, um, as long as they make it authentic and, and um, you know, personal to them. I think that's the, the important side. Yeah, we should definitely add a personal touch to it and get inspired with others' work and collaborate that's there's no doubt about it um maddie you want to say something 
Yeah, so I agree with what uh, Rizal said. Um, it really depends on uh, where you stand, if you're more uh, introverted than extroverted. Um, and I've, I've seen people, you know, claiming to be introverted, but then becoming very successful YouTubers. Um, so, yeah, I think you can definitely, even if you're introverted, you can still try to do videos. Um, and that, uh, I mean, you'll get better over time. Uh, if not, then you can start with uh, writing because blogging is more, I mean, it, allow, it allows you to uh, be more private uh, and still, uh, you know, make a good impact. So, yeah, I'll say that. Thank you, Maddie. Over to you, LF, now. Yeah, I love that we have so many different answers. And I hope that our audience also are enjoying our speakers and their answers as well. And just a reminder, if you have any question, feel free to type it in the comments. It's easier for us if we can see your comments. And I say that because I see some people requested to talk. But I think that it will be easier if you just type your answer and we will try to ask that to our speakers. So I will continue with another question that is coming from Nightic. And I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. So the question is, do you think tech blogging and tech Twitter only connect you to tech people, but content on TikTok or YouTube can also attract non-tech people if you make videos infotaining? Um, I don't know, maybe... Eddie, would you like to start? I was, again, being patient, hoping others would uh, give us yeah. a chance to speak, but uh, <laughs> everyone's been quiet. Um, uh, yes, um, I have seen a trend of people going on to Instagram, doing reels or TikTok or shorts on YouTube and doing more kind of infotaining videos, um, I, especially for the, I, I don't want to, to be ageist, but maybe for the younger generation, they prefer, prefer that. Whereas for someone like myself, when I'm cons consuming content, maybe I'm just old, but uh, I, I just want it factual and quick. I don't need entertaining is nice. Like if it's a laugh and they make it like fun in a kind of like a friendly way, but I don't need, I've seen a lot of um, people do quite well on like the TikTok and Instagram reels doing like dances with console logs and this and that. And I, I don't need, I don't have time for that. I watch things at two speed anyway. So um, yes, I don't, obviously don't want it dry. But um, there is um, things doing doing quite well in that area if that's what people want to do with, with, with their content. But people need to remember that, you know, your future employer or your future client could be watching these. So you want to stay in, in your niche. To give an example, and again, we have, I know we haven't spoken about money, but I'd like to give an, a concrete example where um, I have um, – I have friends who, who are also, um, whatever you want to call them, kind of content creators and so forth. And some of them have more followers by a massive amount than me on certain platforms. But they charge less than me because um, they do more jokey stuff and more, again, it's hard to categorize it all. I'm not saying it doesn't work like that. But mine is a bit more corporate or maybe a bit more, like, I don't know, I can say it's boring. It's my content. So, <laughs> uh, and I don't have the big enough, as many numbers as them or as many views. But when clients come to me, it's something they can share on their kind of channels as well because I have probably explained that really badly. I should have thought it through first. I shouldn't have gone first. But um, hopefully that kind of makes sense in that you got to think about your personal brand. And I think you don't want to, jump around too much if you people want to go into the kind of infotaining side then that's fine nothing wrong with that i think it's becoming more and more popular but you just need to think about like i said your future employers or future clients could could see that um yeah i did that terribly someone please give me some reactions how bad was that <laughs> no it was great i i loved it and I actually agree with you. I don't know if it's an age thing or something else, but I have publicly spoke about that as well, that I found it a bit weird when you're trying to explain how code works, how a specific coding concept works, but you do a dance with it or something like that. And this is something personal. Maybe other people have a different opinion. So I would also like to hear what Maddie has to say about it. So mm, this is a tough question because I only do blogging. Um, I don't create content on TikTok or YouTube. Um, and overall, um, no, I do think that if you if you create content on tech, then I'd say 
80 percent of the people following you are around either are already in tech or want to be uh, in tech um especially on tiktok i wouldn't say that people who don't want to be in tech would follow you um yeah but i i, I don't know i don't know i'm i don't create content on tiktok or youtube so i wouldn't say so but for tech blogging i'd say that yes most people are uh, in tech yeah I see your point. Um, maybe we could also see that from the consumer side. So as a consumer, if we prefer to learn something by watching like a YouTube video or and TikTok or an Instagram reel or something by some people that explaining specific things in a serious way, or if they do some more silly things, dances and stuff like that. But yeah, absolutely. I see your point as well. So Rizel, would you like to add something? Yeah, wait, can I just, um, I, I missed, missed the initial question. Was it like, do does our content reach tech and non-tech people? I'm confused, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that was the question. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, okay, yeah, I would agree with Maddie and Eddie. Like, I, hmm, how do I say this? Okay, I try to make serious content because I want to reach developers and because that's my job and um I as as someone who was a developer and worked with other developers I know that we're not at least at least I wasn't not that interested in like the the silly stuff like dancing and all that like I just want to like if I'm I'm stuck on a bug or I'm trying to figure out how to use a framework, I don't want to watch you dance at the same time. Like I'm just like let me get to the answer already. Like I just want to copy paste or whatever it is, um, because I at that moment I'm frustrated or I just want to to learn. So I don't I don't know if it's an age thing or not, but because I'm not I'm not I don't I don't think I'm old, um, <laughs> but. Yeah, that's that's been my experience, and especially because I'm a black woman, and like we're already like rare in the industry, so I don't want it to be someone's like, oh, this girl can't code, and now she's like not even taking um tech seriously. I think that maybe sometimes I attract people who want to get into tech, but I'm not really aiming to attract people who are not technical and don't and are not interested in games and tech. Yeah, I see your point and I actually think that that's a thing that do we want to attract people that are not in the tech world or do we want to attract people that are in the tech world? So I think that if you don't want to attract people from the tech world maybe you could go ahead with other types of videos but i feel and i get that from your answers as well that if you want to attract people from the tech world maybe it's better to stick to what you already do okay eddie can go ahead thank you um i, I love rizelle's comment and it gave me gave me a thought where actually you know I, for my content, I want to uh, attract people who want to get into tech so they have a desire to learn more about tech, but I don't want people who aren't interested in tech. Um, so, for example, uh, because it can hurt my content, and let me explain why. So, for example, if someone's a, a travel vlogger, right, um, the person could be in tech, the person could be a travel person themselves, or they could just you know, enjoy watching their type of content and videos. I think it's, um, it all kind of adds value. But to give it a real example on my side, I do occasionally do like every six months to 12 months, I do a Twitter kind of video on YouTube where I um, kind of explain how I've grown my Twitter and so forth and give latest updates and stats and behind the scenes. But that, or that, although that video does quite well, it hurts my channel because the people that watch that video aren't interested in tech, they're interested in growing on Twitter in some other industry. So when they watch my video, that video does really well. It has good retention, good click-through rate, all that great stuff. But then when YouTube suggests my other content to them, they don't click on it. So therefore, my other content does worse, uh, especially the ones in, that follow that video. Like it, it, gets, it slowly grows back up and it gets a bit better. But the videos after that Twitter video always do, do worse um, because Twitter, uh, YouTube is promoting it to the wrong people. So I think... 
Um, if we want to focus in tech, we want to focus on people who are in tech or who want to get into tech, right? They have, they want to see more of your content on that, on that subject. Otherwise having viral content doesn't, doesn't, I don't think helps us. Um, cause then we get shown to people that aren't in our, in our niche in, in my, in my, from my experience and in my opinion. Okay. That was very interesting and thank you for sharing it with us. Um, I will move on to another question, and we don't have a lot of time, so I will try to be quick on that. Uh, this question is coming again from the audience, and it's been asked by Svikes. The question is, if you look into analytics as a blogger or as a YouTuber, and if you're using specific uh, tools or interfaces to check your analytics, and I will also like that, how important are analytics for you? Mm, Rizal, do you want to start? Oh, yeah. Oh, did you say Rizal? Sorry. Yeah, but then I saw Maddie has her hand <laughs> up. Go ahead. Let Maddie speak. I don't have a good answer yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So as a tech blogger, I definitely look at uh, stats. Uh, I use two main tools, Google Analytics and Google Search Console. Um, you can sign up for free, which is amazing. And uh, um, so th this tools are different because Google Analytics is more for the users, while Google Search Con Console it tells you uh, the performance of your website. So how if your website is um, like the speed of your website and other metrics such as uh, if any uh, if you have any broken link. Um, well, with Google Analytics, I use it mainly because I want to know how many page views I get per month or per week or per day, um, the bounce rate and where the users are located. And this allows me to tailor my content uh, better, especially when it comes to scheduling. Um, so, yeah, I use Google Analytics, Analytics and Search Console. You can sign up for free. And, yeah, they're both amazing. Awesome. Thank you for sharing them with us. What about you, Rizal? Do you have a better answer now? Um, not really, but I'll still try. Um, I would say I don't I don't focus on analytics that much. I'll I'll usually look at the, the built in like tools that whatever platform has, like if it's hash node and it says like, oh, this many people liked it and this many people viewed it. Um, or like Twitter, like the impressions. Um, I just, all I look for is like, has it increased from the last time? And I don't obsess over it a lot, mostly because um, I, what I've been taught in DevRel is to not worry about the vanity metrics. Cause like my goal is not necessarily like, oh, I got like the most views or whatever. It's more like, um, how am I reaching people? Like, what's the impact and stuff like that? So I've tried, I've tried not to focus as much on the the analytics. So I don't have, I don't have a lot of thoughts. So I'll let Eddie go. Yeah, Eddie, you can go. Thank you. To be honest, my answer is very much like Rizelle's. I thought Maddie's answer was great. I don't really look at analytics. I just want to say thank you to Maddie uh, for showing us kind of you know what tools you use and what you look at. I should probably look at analytics more. Um, I think. Because when you're putting out so much content that if w some will do better than others and, and, and it could be because of the content, it could be because of the time you posted it, it could be because of, you know, some big person shared it and it could be so many reasons. So I try not to look at the, the micro, I try and look at the, the macro and as long as over that month that I've done something a bit better, then I'm kind of happy rather than trying to look at every individual video or tweet or something like that. But Maddie's put the hand up. I'd love to hear more from Maddie. So over to you. Yep, Maddie. Yeah, Maddie. <laughs> no, so I wanted to add definitely, um, I, I do look at analytics, but um, um, I stay uh, detached from them. I mean, if for one day I receive less use, then I won't panic about it. I'll still keep pushing up content because anyway, blocking is what I like to do. Um, I don't do it for the analytics. So, um, but overall, I think it's very interesting um, because it allows you to understand more about the user and the type of content that the user is looking uh, is looking for, and um, how your overall website performs. Because um, uh, that um, allows you to understand. Okay, so maybe I have to fix something um, because the the website is too slow. Um, metrics like that. So uh, that's the main reason why I look at analytics. But definitely, 
um, I do suggest to stay detached from them uh, because it can get um, it can get unhealthy, and I wouldn't suggest that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mari. That was lovely, and I think we all learned something by your answer. Um, so I said before that that would be our last question, but I found another one that I really, really want to ask. And we are almost in, in our one hour mark. So I will try once again to be quick. Uh, okay, last question. How do you all handle negativity, uh, spam content and stuff like that? So um, I guess that I will start with Eddie this time. <laughs> I see a pattern here. Okay, I want to try and keep my answer short. Um, great question, Amanda. I love this. And it does increase. Uh, the the more, more kind of um, vanity metrics, whatever you want to call it, as, as we grow, the, um, the spam content and the negativity, like the trolls will increase. Um, it, it just happens. It's part and parcel. And I would recommend to everyone to just get friendly with the blog button. Um, if someone's being uh, disagrees with me and they're being professional about it, I love it. I really, really love it when people disagree disagree with me, but keep it professional. So if anyone does disagree with my content, please let me know. I love that. But you can clearly see when someone's a troll and and just trying to be an idiot. And for those, I used to try and chat to them and try and you know bring them over. But to be honest, I felt it just took too much of my time and energy. And so now, if someone's clearly a troll, then I just block them. That's it. Kind of goodbye. Um, I wouldn't waste time and energy on it. I wasted too much time and energy, and I think it's it's not it's not worth it. Um, would be my my suggestion. Um, yeah, uh, that's my suggestion. I'll leave it short there, short there. Yeah, I'm I'm sure you could talk more about that, but thank you, Eddie, for adding that, and I absolutely agree with you. So, Madi. Yes, I I would agree. Um, and usually, I, I I kind of not reply to haters. Um, because it's it says more about them than uh, myself and the content. I mean, if if like you took some time to uh, write a negative co ne negative comment on the internet, then I don't know. It just says that you're a sad person. <laughs> That's how I see. Um, so yeah, I kind of I just ignore them honestly, and I don't even take it personally. They probably don't even exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, what about you, Rizal? Uh, at first, I used to take it personally. I used to be like, oh my god, this person thinks I'm dumb, or they think I don't know what I'm talking about. But, like, after a while, I did a little research. Sometimes I'll click on the user profile, and I'll be like, this person is not even a software engineer. So, like, just like Eddie and, and the rest of them, I don't I don't really um, respond anymore, I'll, or I'll delete the comment or block it, because... Who cares? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that this is a nice approach. Or my personal opinion is that this is a nice approach. Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone, for your answers. I hope that our audience loved your answers as much as I did. And I know my co-host, Akansha, is also really uh, glad about your answers, too. So, okay, maybe we would like, do you like, do you want to add any final tips for blogging, for content creation, and let people know where they can follow you? Okay, Madi, do you want to start? Any final tips, conclusion, or where can people follow you? Yes, so, um, well, my main tip as a tech blogger is to uh, stay consistent and uh, just enjoy the journey. Um, it really takes consistency to um, become a, a good tech blogger and you, you never stop learning. And another thing where you can find me, you can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn. The, the name is the same, just uh, drop the underscore. And yeah, I'm always happy to chat. Um, so yeah, whenever, always happy to help. Thank you, Madi. Eddie? Thank you. I was just going to say to everyone, create content, start small. You don't need to, you know, write some um, amazing white paper or whatever they call those fancy things. Um, just start small. You can go from Twitter, collect up in your, uh, a few tweets and threads and make it into a blog post, into a video or vice versa. Go from a video or blog post into tips um, from, uh, from uh, on Twitter and so forth. Get your content to, to work harder for you because content creation is hard. Um, but documenting your journey is easier. So when you learn something today, 
tweet it, share it, make notes, write a blog post on it. And if you want to do um, kind of a little mini hack and you want to grow, you know, you could take a screenshot of this Twitter space and you could tag us and say, had a great time in this Twitter space. And I'm pretty sure people on stage will like it. But if you want them to reshare it, you need to add value to their community. And the way you do that is take that screenshot, tag those people, but then list what you learned. I learned, you know, point one, point two, and point three. Now the people you tag have a reason to share it with their community because you've added value to the post. So I'd highly recommend doing that. So that's a, a great way to, to grow further. And if you're short on ideas, chat with the community, collaborate with people. That's a great way to, um, to get ideas, to grow your network as well. Um, lots more ideas, but I'll stop talking because otherwise LF will kick me off stage. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, no, thank you for that idea. And actually that tip with sharing the Twitter space was really, really good. Thank you. Uh, Rizel? Yeah, I would just say, you know, be authentic and, and genuine in, in your content creation. Like, like Eddie and Maddie have said, like use it as a reason to continue to learn in public. It doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, I'm trying to make money off of this or like whatever, because then I think that comes off as not genuine and it might attract the wrong people. You want people who want to be invested in your your learning and career journey and that will help you grow um, at the same time. So that's all I'll say. And if you want to connect with me, my handle is Black Girl Bites on like all social media. Absolutely. Thank you, Rizel. And uh, thank you to our audience for being with us, for asking some beautiful questions. Please do follow our speakers and, of course, do follow Hashnot as well. Follow Akansha and I in the end. And, yeah, we are Hashnot, a free blogging platform. You can write whatever you want you can create your own content you can have your own domain and we would love to read your content and share your content with our community next thursday we will be here again we will be with the hash note engineers uh, designers product team and we will have an awesome Twitter space where we'll, we will focus a little bit more on hash notes. But after that, we will continue as well with content creation, blogging, social media. And once again, we would love to have all of you there as well. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Please follow us on social media, start blogging, and see you on our next Twitter space. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.